Carthage must be destroyed. Here are some knights that I just finished today. They've got standards. They're fully painted. I was showing you guys this project in the uh, one of the previous painting vlogs and how I started it. And after all this time, it took me a while, I finally uh, finished these guys. Just kind of spin it around here. Another six mounted knights for the... Uh, I call it the Agincourt project, but to be honest, I've been taking guys that weren't at Agincourt and just kind of doing anything from basically the, I would say 1400 to 1430, basically from the turn of the century to the Siege of New Orleans, right? So I've kind of been painting that era too with the uh, Knights from Perry. And you can see in the background, there's the previous lads I've done that uh, you guys probably saw before, but these are the latest six that I just finished here and you can see I've got some standards, some great flags from I think it's GMB Designs, that's the company name, name escapes me now, but yeah, I think it's GMB, they're good flags, but I will go through these guys and just show you each one here. I'm going to start on the left here. So I've got uh, a standard bearer here and uh, he has the standard of, I think it's pronounced Vendome, the, uh, you guys can correct me, you French speakers can correct me if I'm pronouncing these wrong. But this is the standard of uh, Louis Count of Vendôme, okay? So Vendôme, yeah, Vendôme. You guys will correct me if I'm wrong. But he is a he is in uh, one particular battle. I forget which one. Um, but he and actually this lad, this Scottish lad I painted back here, are supposedly on the same time. They lose and they become prisoners of war <laughs> to the uh, to the uh, to the enemies invading. But that's okay. And then I have the Count himself here. And uh, I'll try and get him up close. I really enjoyed painting the horses. Sorry, I'm holding the camera today, so it's a bit shaky. But you can see I tried to freehand his coat of arms on his little, uh, his clothing there, over top of his plate. And I tried to just imitate the best I could on such small scale that, uh, that standard, that coat of arms, right? So I think I did a fairly good job. And it's on the uh, back there, as well as the front. As you can see there, it was kind of hard to get behind that uh, that that arm there. I didn't put a shield on him because I don't put shields on all the guys. I'm supposed to be holding the uh, the reins there, or at least that's what it looks like. But yeah, him and just uh, you know a very generic looking man at arms who's carrying his uh, his standard there. So I also put a uh, now I don't know how they carried their standards in the time. Perry gives you these images of very stiff sitting banners, and they're not, I don't even want to call them flags, if you guys know what I'm talking about. You see the infantrymen carrying kind of stiffened banners towards the, 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 the field of battle, right? I, I gave this more of the flag look. I don't know if they were flying flags that waved in the wing, uh, that waved in the wind like so, but I just think flags look better. So it might not be right historically, but for aesthetic, it's definitely uh, beautiful, I think. <laughs> All right, the second guy here, I was gonna make him a generic man at first, but I started doing these triangle shapes on the front of this horse here, and then I decided, hey, I know this uh, Lafayette. I don't know how to pronounce that either. <laughs> I think it's Lafayette. Uh, but in any case, that's where I got that uh, shield uh, shield influence from there. So sorry if the camera gonna shaky, but. See, I went kind of crazy on his lance. I don't know what I was doing at first, but in the end, I think he turned out great. So I've got a, another, I'm not gonna, maybe he's not a particular character. I don't know who was in the war during that time, but I know the Lafayette, uh, the clan there, whatever they call it, the family, they were around at the time. So he's part of that as well. Now, this one here, just a generic knight. I, I like yellow and blue together, so I just made him very generic. He's got a, a pretty uh, wicked looking weapon there <laughs> and uh, yeah I just wanted to do a generic guy with blue and yellow and I decided to split the uh, the kind of horse uh, decoration I kind of split it along and quartered it I guess quartered halved it whatever it's called I halved it with the uniform he's wearing with the uh, padded gear he's wearing so that is kind of cool to do this guy here I based off the Viscount of Narbonne, and uh, the Viscount of Narbonne, I think is William II, he's another character that uh, I think he fought in some other conflict that wasn't part of the Hundred Years' War, you can correct me if you guys know your history, but he did die in one of the battles that I've researched, 
And I he had a very interesting coat of arms, which was this here, where he's got the uh, quarters of white and red, and then he has he had trees on the uh, white part. So I kind of freehanded that. The top part of that shield there has that kind of loop, that hole in it. So I just kind of filled the tree in there. But I thought it'd be cool just to have an alternative guy riding around on the battlefield, right? And the last guy here with a nice white horse is just a standard of the uh, the French army. I think he's supposed to be one of the king's standard in specific, but you know what? It's just three fleur -de on a flag and he's white and blue and he goes forward. So just just a guy I thought I'd do. You know, maybe he's the royal standard. Maybe he, he's just a, a guy carrying a fancy flag. I don't know, but I, I, uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, set it up like that. So anyway, those are the six guys I did recently. I'm just going to line them up here. So what does that mean for me? That means that I can actually start looking at and playing little versions of Lions Rampant because I have the second rule edition book. If you guys follow my channel, I got the new one that came out and I don't have so much time to meet and play with people because I film this stuff pretty late and I don't get out beyond much of that. But what I'd like to do is, and I'll line up the old knights here just to get kind of a unit going. Should I do a big line? Sure, we can do a line or something. We'll just, we'll just kind of miss around them. This is DM boys, DM boys back here, this group. But this is now, I would say, a fairly impressive looking, uh, I'm gonna put a standard in the back here. Why would he be in the front? I don't know, brave. But this is a fancy looking, big unit of knights here now that you know and I love all the different colors that pop out from this unit and I had a lot of fun painting them so in this 12 lads here there's actually two units for Lion Rampant. Lion's Rampant they do uh, I think six men per unit for the mounted knights for the mounted men of arms I forget what they changed the names to but my idea here is that I'm gonna have these units represent the elite forces so there's two units of elite heavy cavalry that'll be thundering across the field. I think that's 12 points, as is, without any upgrades or anything like that. I might be wrong, I don't remember how many points there are. Um, but I did calculate out that these forces here in total, and then these guys are just, you know, uh, six, again, six guys for the elite heavy knights on foot for Lion's Rampant. That's another unit alongside, and I'll put them back here with this castle. I got this little, uh, not castle, but this tower. I got another, uh, Six or actually, I think one, two, three, four, five, six. Or, oh, I got seven up here. So, technically, one should go back here, and I'm not including that guy with the shield yet. But the other lads that I shared with you guys in uh, previous videos that's another unit. So, these six units of foot knights essentially, another six unit of foot knights, zoom in like that, and then finally, I will have two units of these very heavy cavalry, and that essentially is 24 points, which means I can play against a friend, and I have a friend who does this kind of stuff, so I'll probably have some games with him eventually here. But before that, I would like to uh, maybe do very simple, just to kind of run through the rules. I'm not gonna do a big tutorial like I did Hail Caesar, but I think what I wanna do is I want to just do some demo games of 12 points versus 12 points as I work on the rest of my stuff, because I still wanna do the uh, you know, the, I call them sergeants, I don't know what they're called now, but I still want to do like the other troops that the army is supposed to have, right? So, for now, I'll use all these elite infantrymen and these elite cavalrymen for, I don't know, so some demo games. I will slowly set them up because, you know, November is almost coming to a close here and Christmas is almost around the corner. That means I'm going to be busy with work, busy with family matters, and, uh, you know, like, you know, we're all busy, so... I don't know when I'll start it, but it's gonna be kind of like, you know, just a solo game thing here. And I'll even use my Fleur de Lis dice that I had the Kickstarter for, so I think it'll be really cool. I have two forces of French, maybe one, maybe we can say one force is from um, Brittany and the other force is from, uh, you know, some other, somewhere else in France or something. We can do the, the Count of Vendôme, uh, Count of Vendôme and uh, versus, I don't know this lad back here or something. <laughs> oh, we got, we actually, I actually have, I forgot. I have actually have, I won't move him there, but I got Arthur, who is, a, he is from Brittany, so we can use him and see what we can do with that, so. So yeah, that is all of my forces done, painted. I do have to do a little bit of work on some of the bases there, on just the edges, but other than that, this is a fully, 
playable Lion Rampant Force. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have a lot of fun. I'm gonna go put this up on YouTube and probably take some photos and share it on the uh, on different forums and Facebook because I, I like doing that too. So, so thank you all for watching and thank you for uh, continuing to follow my progress in this Lion Rampant and this uh, Hundred Years of War project, as I call it, this Agincourt project, as I've been calling it. And thanks for your comments and suggestions and how to pronounce names, because often I don't know how to pronounce a lot of French names. I'm, I'm from the Anglosphere, right? So I don't know how to say Vandum or Lafayette or, or uh, Narbonne. I, I actually Google <laughs> the pronunciations before I come to the videos now, so I can kind of say them right. If I say them wrong still, just let me know. So that's it for the forces, and thank you for watching. More content soon. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.